is this guy a mistake? That's the question that uh, Sports Mockery is asking today. And are they asking that directly? Is Tyson Bajan a mistake? No, they're not saying that directly. What they're saying is, is the current makeup of the um, quarterback's room for the Chicago Bears a mistake? And why are they saying that? Well, the Chicago Bears did a great job of improving the offense. However, let's just say, for example, in the first game of the season, um, like Aaron Rodgers, who wanted an entire season off for some reason, uh, Caleb Williams gets injured on the first or second play of the game, and his season is over. What do we do then? And the answer to this is Tyson Bajan. And, it's, and the question is, is this a mistake? Could it be that Tyson Bajan and Brett Ripien are not capable of doing what needs to be done on this team? And here's the thing. I don't think that's the case. I think that this is, I think that Tyson Bajan's probably going to be one of these underrated guys um, in the NFL. I, I, I don't think that, I think he's got a good career in the NFL, and I think he's going to be a good player in the NFL. Uh, he wasn't great last season, but he was okay. And it was his rookie season. He was moving from Division two all the way up to the NFL. Unheard of but he did it. And, you know, the question then becomes, uh, did he get better as the season went? And I think, here's the thing. I think he got better as the season went. I think his coach got worse. So Tyson Bajet returns uh, after his surprising ascent as an undrafted rookie to become last year's primary backup. He was joined by veteran Brett Ripien, who has limited playing experience during his career and wasn't any good when he did play. Joe Tansy of Bleacher Report believes the Bears are taking a dangerous risk by riding with those two behind Caleb Williams. Now, I disagree with Joe Tansy of Bleacher Report, but he says, but after all quarterback injuries across the NFL in 2023, the Bears have to at least be prepared for the worst case scenario so they do not lose a year. <clears throat> Tyson Bajant and Brett Ripien will fight for the backup role in training camp. Bajant had three touchdowns and six interceptions in backup duty in 2023. Ripien owns four touchdown passes and nine interceptions in the spot starts he's had across the league. Neither player inspires a ton of confidence at the moment, but again, the hope is whomever earns the backup job helps Williams improve instead of playing. Now, there is the question here of, is that right? Could it be that Ryan Tannehill, who's still out there and available and can be had for a pretty cheap price, can come in and supplant Brett Ripien to allow... Caleb Williams to absorb or learn from Ryan Tannehill, who's been a, 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 a good veteran in the league, would he learn more in that context? And, you know, to be fair, that is certainly a possibility, but um, who knows? Who, who knows? Uh, what I think is this. I think that Tyson Bajan is, we're a little, I think, Tyson Bajan is a little better than the surface person here would give him credit for. And I don't know. I, look, to be fair, I don't have any data that I think is going to back that up. It's just a feeling I have that Tyson Bajan is, first of all, lucky to be here. Uh, he took that fact and built upon it and grew uh, and turned himself into a much better player, a more NFL-ready player. If we are right and that a player like that does have a, a good second year leap, then he is probably a sufficient backup in this league. And he could probably win some games from the Chicago Bears. First of all, I think he was coached poorly last season. And it should be obvious that every Bears quarterback has been coached poorly for quite a few years now. So it is possible that having this um, this new offensive scheme, this new offensive system turns Tyson Bajan into something that he was not before. So I think that Shane Waldron, or sh I should say in Shane Waldron, I trust that should there be a catastrophic circumstance concerning Caleb Williams and Tyson Bajan is all we have, we're going to be fine. That Tyson Bajan is potential. And by the way, Crimson says, if he needs to come in, let's hope he learned to throw the ball downfield. 
Um, I've seen throws. I've seen him in practice. I think he's been posting his practices. He looks a little stronger in his arm. It looks a little bit snappier coming down the field. I hope that means that he's gained a little bit and worked a little bit on his throwing accuracy and um, uh, his, his throwing power. Hopefully that is the case. If that is the case, then I think we're going to be fine. And also Shane Waldron probably, uh, if he recognizes that that is a weakness, probably won't ask him to throw down the field. Now, um, if he can just connect on a few passes down the field and, and get some respect for that arm, then that changes. And even if we're not throwing down the field, uh, at least he's going to have a lot of options. And in the shorter passing game, you know, we'll see what happens. By, by the way, here's the other part. Um, I mean, guys, we have to face facts. After DJ Moore, there was a tremendous drop off in the quality of receivers last year. So let's take our blinders off. Um, Let's take our blinders off and let's look at it objectively. There was nobody to throw to. And, you know, look, we can talk about Darnell Mooney all we want, but Darnell Mooney was not good last year. Tyler Scott was still a rookie and he was not good last year. Uh, after DJ Moore, that was it. You had Cole Komet. You had Roshan Johnson coming out of the backfield. Uh, but he wasn't, you know, he, he I, you know what? Khalil Herbert had 20 catches, so... Um, you know, we could say that 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 was the case, but I mean, look, everything that could go wrong with that offensive system and scheme did go wrong with it. They tried to turn just, Justin Fields into something he's not. It ended up poorly. Um, but with all of that, we were still seven and ten, and just a few good plays away from being a a playoff team. Like legitimately, we were just that close to you know a couple of uh, the ball goes the right way a couple of times is a playoff team and Green Bay is not a playoff team. I mean, it was that close. So um, we have to consider here, Mooney was not good. Tyler Scott was not good. Now Tyson Bajan, he throws the ball up. Even if he throws a weak ball, Roma Dunsey goes and gets it. You know, that's what we didn't have before. Or he's got a shorter outlet and that outlet, Keenan Allen or DeAndre Swift. Elite receivers uh, as opposed to, you know, just guys that are, filling up the wide receiver slot. There is a big difference right now in the quality. So I think Tyson Bajant is going to be just fine. And I would be happy to be on a team where he was my quarterback. And I would have every faith that he would get better. By the way, the season, the season to me uh, would be a, kind of a throwaway. Um, if Tyson Bajant comes in, like I can't see – the same sort of 13 and four. And I'm giving a lot of credit to Caleb Williams uh, for being everything that people expect him to be or, or hope that he is. And I like Tyson Bajan, but again, I think that's a step that's a significant step down. So I don't know that he represents um, he doesn't represent that big opportunity that uh, Caleb does, but look, I'm still, I would still be happy. And I still think we would have a winning record. 